Mendocino Vino here. So today I want to talk to you about a book I recently finished, A Cultivated Life by Joy Sterling. A Cultivated Life traces the evolution of Iron Horse Vineyard's 1991 vintage from grape to glass. From those first anxious weeks in April when cold weather threatens the tender green vines to dealing as the year progresses with such varied circumstances as linnet population explosions, market fluctuations, dry spells, and the mad rush of bottling the wine. So Joy Sterling is the daughter of the owners of Iron Horse Vineyard. She is also the manager for public relations and for marketing. So she travels around the country to market the wines, essentially. I loved this book. I thought it was really fascinating and very well written. I think she has a really nice voice that is descriptive without being too flowery. And I liked the way this book kind of balanced between stories about the actual, you know, vineyards and the vintage and the wine making, but also peppered in stories about their lives, about the parents' lives, about her life, about the travels she was making, friends and family members and things like that. Uh, some parts that I found particularly interesting. So 1991 was a long time ago in terms of winemaking. So things have probably changed since then, but you know, I don't really know much about this side of the business and so it was very fascinating for me to read up on it and learn about it. So that was one of the parts of it. Some people might not enjoy how technical this was and I'll say in some parts it did drag a little bit because she kind of got into the weeds about specifics. But for the most part, it just kind of breezed along. Really easy read. I think I finished it in two days. Something else I found kind of interesting about this book is they talked about how Veloxera was an issue. I thought that we had eliminated Veloxera, or at least mitigated it to an extent where it wasn't really a problem anymore. If you're unfamiliar, Veloxera was a pest that wiped out pretty much all the vineyards in Europe in the 1800s until they realized they could put the American rootstock and graft on the European vines onto it. I thought that that had solved the problem, <laughs> and the lobster was over, but apparently it's still a still thing in 1991, and they had to pull out a bunch of vines because of it. Another thing I really liked about this book was a sense of place that she was able to describe. So one of my favorite passages is when she talks about her mother's birthday. This year was mother's 60th birthday. We started celebrating the third week of April and petered out on Mother's Day. One of the parties was at Hog Island Oyster Farm, a funky beachfront oyster depot just south of the Sonoma Line in Marin County. This was Mother's Choice. Half the fun was getting there. It took 40 minutes to travel 20 miles of little winding roads. We cruised through small western towns like Occidental, Bodega, and Freestone, with their 19th century wooden churches and one-room schools, through stands of tall trees, redwoods and pines, with luscious ferns underfoot wild rhododendrons, and three-foot-tall Queen Anne's Lace, past dairy farms and then out to a wide expanse covered with wild iris and grazing sheep just before dropping down to the ocean. You tend to forget that parts of California still look like this. You can't go more than 20 miles an hour, especially us that day, because Forrest and I had the birthday cake from Lark Creek Inn in the trunk of the car. At the party, we had sparkling with oysters and clams fresh out of the water and shucked at the source. We sat on hay bales and ate lobsters steamed in the sand pit and buffalo burgers cooked on open air grills. The wines were our 1988 Chardonnay and our 1983 Cabernet Sauvignon in Magnums. What else would you serve with buffalo burgers? And Cabernet with a dark, rich devil's food cake is one of my mother's favorite food and wine combinations. We danced to Frank Sinatra songs and roasted marshmallows on a driftwood bonfire as the sun set on the water. So that actually invokes for me experiences that I've had on the coast of California and just how wildly beautiful it can be there. So the book has a lot of kind of side stories like that in it, talking about serving wine to special people and different people. Wolfgang Puck makes an appearance. I'm 1991 Wolfgang Puck as well. I would highly recommend this book if you're interested in learning more about the kind of business side of winemaking and the technical side of winemaking, but explained to you in a way that's not like a textbook. Unfortunately, it is no longer in print, so if you want to get a copy, I recommend checking out your local used bookstore. They have a lot of great stuff there. I got a lot of these books behind me at the used bookstore. This is Mendocino Vino, and I give this book four out of five grapes. I'll see you guys again next week.